So you're asking yourselves, why? Why did we start Gather by singing our school song? But I want to tell you why. There are lots of reasons I wanted to start Gather today with our school song. The first is we have lots of new friends, new parents and new students at PBS, and we haven't had a chance to sing it yet, and I thought we should try. The second reason is it's really, really important to practice our school song so it can sound beautiful. And the third reason, it's our school song. We should sing it. But I also had another reason for starting Gather with our school song, because it was a way I wanted to think about our topic for today. The topic is rigor. Now, don't get too excited. Rigor is a very difficult thing to define and to understand. Here's another example to show us how music can help us think about rigor. This is Chopin, and this is a score by Chopin, who's a 19th century composer from Poland. To make beautiful music, to make beautiful music, just like you did with our school song, piano players like me need to start by learning the notes on the page. This task is demanding, which means that it's really difficult to get it right. Learning notes like this also requires accuracy. You have to be accurate, which means you have to be careful to get all the notes right, just like Chopin wrote them on this page. But learning the notes on the page, as hard as that is, and as accurate as you have to be, that's not music. It's not just music learning the notes. This is the music. Whoop. I'm a little bit off in my clicking. I'm not very accurate. That's music, not just the notes on the page. And it takes big time rigor to make music like that. It takes big time rigor to be a piano player. It's demanding to learn the notes and to do it accurately, but learning notes doesn't make music. And that means we have to add another element to our definition of rigor. And that word is imagination. It's something only we human beings can do. There are notes on the page, that demands accuracy. But we need your imagination to turn those notes into beautiful music. Here's another way to look at it. There's one answer to this math equation, 10. That is the one correct answer. But let's look at this equation in a different way. Here on the right side, there are multiple answers. In fact, infinite solutions. For example, 5 plus 5 equals 10, or 6 plus 4, or 7 plus 3, or 5.1. It went back again. I'm, really, I'm having a really hard, there we go. Thank you, Saloni. Or 5.1 plus 4.9 equals 10. My friends, my point is, both left side and right side require rigor. It takes rigor to solve for one correct answer, and it takes rigor to solve for multiple answers. The amount of rigor depends on how long you've been doing math. The level of demand depends on what grade you're in and how old you are. Being accurate is important so you can get the right answer or the right answers because there are right answers on both sides, both equations, whether there's one answer or many. And yes, you need imagination too, because at PBS, 
Rigor means telling your teacher why 5 plus 5 equals 10. To put your imagination to work. To find the various numbers adding up to 10. To explain your thinking. To show your work. To make sure that we know you understand how these equations work and how you can do them without just memorizing. My friends, the problem here is that rigor has gotten a bad reputation. Rigor has gotten a bad reputation over the years. And here's why. Originally, the word rigor comes from Latin and Middle English. And it was translated to mean stiff. It's sort of like if your arm is stiff, you can't bend it. You can't move it. It's not flexible. That's a problem. Because at PBS, we don't want stiff learning. We don't want inflexible thinking. Instead, we need a fresh look at rigor. School is exciting when it can be rigorous, especially when you think about it in these three ways. Demanding, because we want you to work hard and challenge yourselves. All good things, students, are demanding. They're not easy. If you want something good, it had better be hard to do. Demanding, then accuracy. We need all of you students to work with your teachers to work things out, to get all the right answers, whether an equation has one correct solution or many correct solutions. And the third word is imagination. Demanding, accuracy, imagination. You need a lot of imagination to do accurate note playing and to make it into beautiful music, or to be accurate with a math equation so you can do beautiful math, because math is beautiful too. Big time rigor here at PBS. That's our goal. Not stiff, not inflexible, rigorous. Demanding, accuracy, and imagination. You might not know this, but every PBS teacher has a laptop from school. You did know that? Oh, well, wow. That's rigorous. So, but let me tell you something about these laptops, something you may not know. Our technology team at PBS gives a very special name to each laptop. That requires imagination, because what they could have done was just given a number. But they've given a name to each laptop. There it is. This is the name of my laptop, Veracity. Veracity is a hard word. It's my laptop's name. And spelling this word is not easy, as I've done here. It requires accuracy. There is one correct way to spell veracity. But the meaning of veracity is also important. And the definition is right here. Being faithful to the truth or being faithful to the facts. That's one good definition. I think it takes rigor to spell the word. And I think it takes rigor to do the word. It takes rigor to always be faithful to the truth. My friends, it's very important for all of us to tell the truth. It's important for us to be faithful to the truth. We teach this at PBS, and this days, I think it's a very demanding task. It requires accuracy. It takes rigor to be faithful to the truth and to tell the truth because you know what? The world around us is not telling the truth very much. The world around us is not as faithful to the truth as it should be. So I like my laptop's name, Veracity, because the name of my laptop reminds me that I'm here to teach you, and I'm here to support you to tell the truth and to always be faithful to the truth in everything we do. And that requires rigor. So my friends, I hope you've learned something new about rigor today. And I would like to make sure that every day at PBS is filled with learning rigor, demanding, working really hard to challenge yourselves, accuracy, figure things out, get the right answer if there's only one, 
and get the right answers if there's more than one. And imagination. You all have a ton of imagination. And I want you to bring it to life in everything you do at PBS. Thank you for listening and have a rigorous Friday.